Yellow, how are you guys doing today? So, if you already know from the community post, I just stated that I was gonna start dropping Yoshimitsu off as my main. Now, the reason why has to do with a variety of different reasons why I wanna drop him, but one of the things is that I no longer find him fun. Like, yes, I reached checking God, and you may think to yourselves, oh, he reached checking God. Oh, the reason why he reached it now, he doesn't want to lose his rank. Now, I could give a shit that if I lose the rank. I, you guys already know that I reached checking God, so if I end up losing the rank, I'll just get it back again. But it's like, again, I just don't find Yoshimitsu fun anymore. It's just like, one particular commenter said in the video that I posted, or I think it was in the community post, where they stated, where it always tends to happen where players that when they play a particular character and they reach a particular high rank with that character, they understand how to play the game, they know how to play the character in and out, and then they find themselves in a position where they feel like they don't really like the character anymore, because now they understood what the character is all about. All the learning process of that character is gone. So now they have to make a choice. Do they think that character is for them? And I'm in that position right now, where I don't think that Yoshimitsu is for me. Funny enough, because if you pick up Yoshimitsu, you would know that he has a plethora of different ways to play him and different mix-ups different setups different like flow charts there's so much about this character that you have to figure out that is funny as a new player when i started playing out yoshimitsu in second seven that it took me this long to now understand how to play the character at a decent level we're talking about literally a year's time where i've been playing yoshimitsu to, from second seven to now to second eight even though with all the new things that he has now received i've only just I guess just now kind of understood how to play him and now I'm starting to see that I don't really like the character I don't really dig him as much as I thought and again it's just like once you start picking up a new character the kind of love the honeymoon phase that you go with the character that you like at the beginning you don't know nothing about that character and then once you do you're like hmm do I want to stick around with that person and that's what I'm feeling now and let me just label a couple, a couple of points as to why I feel this way. So with Yoshimitsu, you already know that he has a lot of inconsistencies with his gameplay. One of the things that kind of like really grinds my gears when I play him is the fact that a lot of his moves, a lot of his hitboxes don't connect well enough on the opponent. Like down 2-2 two -two whiffs a lot. His samurai cutter whiffs a lot. You can see right here that the light trace goes through the leg, but it still ends up whiffing. This is just a minor demonstration that what could happen in the game but i have loads of clips of yoshimitsu where even at this range the samurai cutter would whiff they didn't like the size step me to the right they haven't done anything they it, it just whiffs because they do a simple back step what they're still close enough to getting hit by the move and they s somehow escape it which makes no sense or how in the video that i just posted up where i do where I do four slide three, this kangaroo kick, and then I go for Gehosen, his CD1. You see that the sword actually went through the body of the character, but it somehow didn't hit Steve. And that aggravated me when that happened, as I was trying to journey up and go through the ranks to get to Tekken God. There's so much about this character that I just don't like when it comes to the inconsistencies, because I know that he's not the only one. He's not the only character that has problems. There's a lot of characters in the game now, because even with all the patches that have been coming out for Tekken 8, he's not the only character with these gimmicks or these glitches or these problems that happen in the game. But either way, what about the positives? Well, the fact that he has a lot of new strings, like the fact of his 2-2 two -two goes into no sword stance. It's only minus uh, 1 or minus 2, I believe, if I check right now. It's minus one, yeah, minus one, and this baits out the opponent if they want to press buttons, I can go for flash right afterwards. 2-2 two -two still goes into your Kencho stance like you do in Tekken 7, but the fact that he doesn't really have all of other strings that he can go with to go into different stances, like he still has, like let's say, this into Indian, and now the new move, his full crouch on Fort 4 goes into Indian as well. But what about Flea? Like Flea only really has two strings. It only has up forward 3 plus 4 into down 1 plus 2 for ke for the flea sense. And you also have your forward 3 plus 4 if you hit the opponent goes into flea as well. I would have liked that he had more strings that can transition into his flea stance. Because this move is kind of goaded when it works. But you don't really see that happening. At least I don't see it happening in the future with any new seasons for the game. But besides that, he has amazing strings with 3-1. 3-1 is an amazing move. An amazing string. It's plus 7 on block. 
you can frame trap with this move with your Dragonfly 2 or with your 4 1 plus 2 if you wanted to. You can kind of even bait them if they're afraid, go into your 4 instead if they if they respect you enough. That there's so much that they have given Yoshimitsu 3 2 1 plus 2. Very strong move, even though it is unsafe on the last hit at minus 14. But on at the wall, if they end up guessing that you're gonna go for your 3 1, which is a high at the last hit, you can bait them into this and catch them off guard. So it gives him a little bit of easiness when it comes to mixing up the opponent. But he loses out in a lot of other stuff in his gameplay that I enjoyed in Tekken 7. Like for example, he used to have a combo with Yoshimitsu with his down forward 2 launch, where he does something like this. CD2 used to launch, or used to like uh, bound the opponent. It no longer bounds in this game, and it was one of, my, one of my favorite moves to bound with in Tekken 7. That was removed to giving him moves like let's say his down forward 1, 2 into 1, that now bounds, and 2-2 two, two, that bounds. And instead, if you wanted to go for a similar route, you would do this instead. You would do that now, because now you're canceled back to one bounds on the last hit. Or in the fact that when you do go for CD2, let's say for example, and you get the bound, but let's say you didn't, you went for your Moonsault Slayer for a setup to go even for more damage. So for example, you do something like this. Let's just imagine that your back to one in Kencho is your CD2. And then you did your Musa Slayer to land the on, on the opponent. But that doesn't work in this game. Oh, it does work. I just did it slower. That is a usual route for damage. And as you see, if I were to go for it again one more time. It does 58 damage. In Tekken 7, if you were to go for this route, you will do nearly 66 damage or more depending. Because they removed the aspects of this move in this game where it did more damage in, in general. They also removed the fact that this move used to be an unblockable, now it's just a normal hit that gives you chip damage. Hell, there's a lot of other things about his kit that I just don't in generally like, but of course, a lot of this new stuff that he has, like this up back 1 plus 2. Very strong, especially in those sword stands, does a bunch of damage. That's 39 damage on a clean hit. And it heals too. And if you perform it like this, it has a bit of push block. It's safe, it's safe on block. If you do it with your no sword stance version, it has a lot more push block. And it does more, I think, damage to the opponent if they're blocking it. So there's a lot of stuff that I enjoyed about Tekken 7 uh, Yoshimitsu that I don't really like in the fact of with Tekken 8 Yoshimitsu. Another move too that I don't understand why they were, they kind of like changed is his 4 3 plus 4. This used to be a power crush but now they changed it into a regular hit. Instead his forward 4 is a power crush. In Tekken 7 this used to be a wall bounce. Now it just gives you this. It doesn't even, oh well it depends. It does give you a, <laughs> a pulse flat. But you have to be very close to make the attack land into a wall splat. But again, like I said, in Tekken 7, it used to wall bounce. But they opt to just change it into a power crush because I guess since now it doesn't really have a proper use in Tekken 8 because it doesn't have a wall bounce, they opt to give it a power crush. Which, again, I don't know why they couldn't just give him two power crushes, one for 4, 3 plus 4, and his 4, 4. That would have been fine. Which kind of dis uh, disrupts some of the aspects of his shenanigans with his 4, 3, plus 4. How you can do stuff like this. Kind of like bait the opponent to do something. If they were to attack you while you're doing this, it doesn't kill you. It doesn't do anything. It does some damage, but you're armored up. But now, if you were to do this in front of the uh, opponent, they can just launch you. But it still has its usage as a bait tool, but you know, you wouldn't really use it now anymore. Not, as, not like before. And the biggest thing that I find with him is that while he's in meditation stance or Indian stance, he doesn't heal anymore, like raw health. Now to get your health back is if you attack the opponent with your moves like this, to get health back in return. What this means is, is that Yoshimitsu cannot really play this defensive role anymore. So if you want to force the opponent to come to you, so that that way if you're healing yourself from a distance and forcing them to actually aggro you, you can no longer do that anymore. So whenever you do stuff like this in the game, like how I tend to play, 
they'll just look at you like you're stupid. Like, why would you force yourself to do all this stuff when in reality, if you're doing all this, you're just wasting time. Like, you can still bait them to force them to come towards you, but a lot of the times you're doing this for no reason whatsoever. Unless they do tremendous amounts of chip damage to you, and you need to heal it off quickly, then yes, you would do this. But other than that, in most cases, you won't. You're just doing it just to be able to aggravate the opponent to come to you, and that's it. So those aspects of Yoshimitsu is also gone, kind of. So with all that being said, these kinds of components of Yoshimitsu's gameplay has kind of been removed, and they streamlined them so significantly, where I feel like he's not as fun anymore. Like, he looks cooler, yes, in Tekken 8 than he does in Tekken 7 with the whole alien squid-like form that he has. But still, I just genuinely don't like the way he plays now in this current state of the game. Maybe they'll give back some of the tools that he used to have in Tekken 7 to Tekken 8, to, like with CD2 being able to bound. Hell, even his 2-3 used to bound in Tekken 7, and now it doesn't bound anymore. It's a useless move. Like, why would you do this on the ground as well? This is minus 10. When well, you can just do 2-1 instead, which is safe, at minus 9. And on counter hit, okay, it does some damage, 36 damage. 2-1. That's 35. It's only one less damage if you perform it. And both of these moves don't even completely link together as a follow-up because you have to get a counter hit off of them. But you'll still opt to go for 2-1 more over your 2-3 instead. The only utility that this move had was for combos to get the bound. But no, you no longer have that uh, ability with 2-3. So what would be the point of using 2-3 uh, other than to just bait them into thinking, oh, I'm going for 2-1, so they're going to block it. But if they do block 2-3, then it's minus 10. So what would be the point? You can't even cancel this. Imagine if you could, though. If they could cancel this move into something else midway, maybe goes into flee. That would be pretty cool if that were to happen. I even thought of the idea that if he did something like along the lines of up 3 plus 4, right? This move is still okay. In this game, even though I would have preferred it to be better, like in Tekken 7, it used to be plus 2, now it's only plus 1. If you make them block, it's plus 1. But imagine if you can go into up 3 plus 4, and midway of you being in the air as you're doing your front flip, that you can go into your flea. So imagine if you do that, and in mid air, you're going to flee, and you can actually plunge with the sword. That would be pretty dope in my opinion, if that were to happen. Or better yet, same, same thing with his Kensho parry, it, it works the same way. Like imagine if I can just plunge with the sword as I'm going into flea stance up in the air. That would be super cool in my opinion. But besides that, I, I just don't think that he is that character for me anymore. Again, it, it really just depends. Once you become at a certain level uh, or a certain rank in the game with your character, you may start to have the same feelings like I'm having now, where I'm just no longer feeling him anymore. <laughs> Pause. And just genuinely don't like the character as much anymore. Maybe I'm just feeling burnout and I just don't want to play Yoshi now. I just want to play other characters. And one of the things that I find myself like really pondering is that the reason why I play Yoshimitsu for this long as well is that my channel does super well because of him a lot of players want to learn how to play yoshimitsu even though i already have lots of guides on my channel but i want to move away from him now i want to main other characters i want to pick up other characters and play them and i have i have showed other characters on my channel but they aren't as well received in comparison to yoshimitsu which is funny to me because i would have thought that people will love to see other characters being played but they really want to see yoshimitsu on my channel so that's another thing that kind of aggravates me, but you know, it's YouTube, what you can do really, and what can you really do in general for people that are coming to see you for that character specifically. But yeah, I think at this point, I'm just, just for the sake of my own sanity, on my own like enjoyment of the game, I'm going to be moving away from Yoshimitsu for now. Uh, I do want to drop him in general, because I hope in the future that Armor King comes up. Yes, we have Heiachi that's coming up soon as well, and I am excited for Heiachi as well. I hope that he has some cool stuff that he can do in the game, because yeah, I do miss a bunch of stuff that he has in Tekken 7, and even though he's more execution-based, I wouldn't really mind maining him. Like, I'm thinking of actually picking up Lydia as well, 
solely because I want to try her out. I'm not going to say that I'm going to be maining Lydia, but that doesn't mean that I'm not going to test her out and see whether or not if I do like her and do end up maining her later on. But I know that if you guys don't like that, then well then, you know what? I'm still going to play her anyways. I'm still going to show her off on the channel. I apologize, but I would insist that you go and watch somebody else, like Flashing Mitsu, Rose's Ever Cry, or Eye Musician, and so forth, right? If you want to watch Yoshimitsu content. Again, if Hiachi becomes really cool, like if he has the old stuff that he has in Tekken 7, with his stances, with his electrics, and all the cool stuff that he can do in Tekken 7 during the last patches, and then he has some new cool stuff that he can do in Tekken 8, with the heat stuff and shit like that, man, that would be so crazy. Like, I'm really hoping to see some cool stuff that he can do. Imagine that he has Jin stuff, where he has easy electrics that he can pull off. That would be super broken and funny at the same time because then that really explains the route that bandai is going with the game or at least harada i should say and murray what they're thinking of doing with uh these characters that are coming up as dlc but to me my main character that i really want to main is 100 percent armor king armor king is the character yes king is in this game so a lot of you will say then why not just play king well the thing is they're not really the same to me king has a lot of the same moves to be honest he has a lot of the same moves that armor king has now in tekken 8 because now he can wave dash and that was only strictly something that armor king can do in tekken 7 i mean not, not that you couldn't wave dash with king you could still wave dash with king even in tekken 8 before they gave him that buff but it was much harder to perform armor king on the other hand he can do it with regardless like a mishima he was like a mishima in that sense and in fact he had like a similar move to a wing god fist which was called dark upper uh upper in second seven but it wasn't as plus actually it's not even plus in general i don't think i think it was negative on block if you used it and it got blocked on the opponent but you can mix up with moves like let's say your 4-4 neutral 2 which is very strong in second seven because unlike with king's 4-4 neutral 2 the nut jab that he does where he grabs your balls almost on counter hit it only gives him a hit grab but for armor king it gives him a launch so he can launch with that move and i loved using that move when I was playing him around in online on Tekken 7. Then he has a lot of other stuff that was really cool too that you can do with, uh, with Armor King. But a lot of the things that made him different from King was his combo routes. His combo routes were more brawler style than the grappler style that you were, were seeing in Tekken 8 or from this case in Tekken 7. Where he felt more of a command grab type of character and in the case of Armor King he was more of a brawler. Similar to Murdoch or characters like uh, Paul. So that's what I enjoyed about Armor King, because Armor King wasn't a typical grappling character. He was like a mix, more of a mix than anything. But besides that, I genuinely, genuinely want to see Armor King in this game. Maybe I, uh, in the next season, he'll be in it. I really doubt it they're going to be releasing Armor King, because he is a hype character. But how can you even beat Heiachi? There's a, there's a big, big chance that Armor King might not be the fourth character. In fact, there's been leaks that the case of the matter is that the character that might be the fourth character might either be Ogre. At least from what Moonsaw Slayer, the, the creator, stated from the da uh, data leaks, there might be a chance that Ogre... I can't, I can't even say his name. It might be that Ogre might be the fourth last character because if he were to come out he will be a big hype character especially if they were to change him in some way to fit the narrative of Tekken 8 both gameplay wise and story wise it makes more sense if it was ogre so again if season 2 comes out then I really want armor king but I really hope it comes out in day one of or like that first season of season 2 because man waiting for another season or two or three for armor king to come out because then it's the same shit just like with Heiachi, how can you trump Heiachi? It has to be another big, very popular character. If Army King comes out as the first character in the second season, then it has to be guest characters that they had to release to trump Army King. Because he's just too popular. So I don't know how they'll do that. So besides that, like I already mentioned, I'm going to be leaving Yoshimitsu at the back burner. I will probably be picking up other characters. The roster of characters that I'll be playing around with will be Lydia. Uh, if I don't like her, if I don't like her gameplay, I thought of Lars, I thought of Asuka, I thought of Paul, and lastly, I thought of Brian. Brian might legitimately be the most compatible character with me, to be honest, but I also like the other characters too. So if I end up liking them more before I even hit Brian up as the last character that I'll be playing around with, then I might end up mating Brian. I've 
may even try out King. I don't know if I really want that Armor King itch to be filled. That sounds weird. Pause, and then forget what I just said about that. Then I might end up playing with King, but I don't know if you guys want to watch King, to be honest, on my channel. Like, a lot of you don't like King, like, in terms of gameplay-wise, so I don't know if you guys want to see King, but if you do, let me know. I'll probably be mating King if I end up liking him a lot. So, again, I'll be trying out first Lydia, then Lars, then Asuka, then Paul, maybe Paul, I don't know, maybe I might switch him out to King, and then lastly will be Brian, because I really do think that Brian might be the character, I do like him, but as, it's not like I really think of him most of the time overall as my main, so I will see exactly what's gonna happen, or who knows, maybe I might just like play around in general with all the characters together, and see who I end up sticking with the most. So if you guys like what you watched, I know that it's a long video, a lot of rambling, not enough gameplay wise maybe i might add some gameplay uh, and then edit it out who knows and if not then i hope that you guys at least enjoy the discussion that i'm having here uh dislike it if you want to dislike the video that's fine with me uh subscribe to see more of my shit and stay tuned for what's going to be happening with my channel stay safe stay tuned